computers. So I went at this experiment differently than all the others I usually do. Usually I will research it a lot and then do the experiment and then tell you about it. Um, this time I just decided to dive headfirst in like the students would and try and build a rock bridge not knowing the logistics of it or what I was supposed to do. My first one was absolutely terrible. It fell apart as I was making it. Um, the second and third one as well. So really, um, it was so much fun doing that and I felt like I kind of got a glimpse into what it must be like for the kids to do these science experiments. And I would absolutely love for you to just kind of let them go in and try to build these rock bridges and then give them the information that will be in the binder um, as they're going along or when they're done because really the joy of this experiment is figuring out what works and why are these beautiful structures still standing. So this is my rock bridge that I've made from different sizes of books. You can do this with any size book. It's easier, especially for the younger students, if we use books that are all similar in weight and size. Uh, but really, any books that you have, you can experiment and figure out how to make your bridge. Before we can talk about our rock bridges, we have to establish what erosion is, since this is how they are formed. So erosion is the process by which the surface of the earth is naturally worn down. And this can be from rain, this can be from wind, but it is a natural process, it is not a man-made process. This is a really great example of wind erosion. This is Wendo Rock in Arizona. You can see the weaker points in the sedimentary rock fell away as the wind blew through here. So we'll be asking who remembers what three kinds of rock are from week 14. Three kinds of rock are sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. We'll be asking what type of rock do you think is the most susceptible to erosion? And that would be right here, sedimentary. The reason is because it's softer and more porous. So while natural arches do form in a variety of rock types like limestone and shale for sedimentary rock or granite, basalt, which is igneous, most of the world's natural rock bridges and arches are made from sedimentary rock. So here's one I made with a lot of different sizes of books and more in the center. You can see it does sag a little bit but it is standing and the center of gravity is still on the chairs because the chairs and where the rocks are here are what is supporting the bridge and then the erosion obviously happening through here. So the basic principle of this natural phenomena is the curved design of an arch bridge which does not push the force straight down but instead it displaces the weight along the curve and it carries the entire load of the weight instead of having it pressed down on certain spots. So even though we have a thinner support here, the weight is being dispersed throughout the whole arch. And here you have a wonder of ancient Roman architecture. This is the widest arch in the Roman world. They built thousands of arches in ancient Rome. And then of course there's the Colosseum. This is a photo my husband took when we were there in 2012. And so you can see all of the different arches here in the Colosseum. And then many, many more in the Forum.